Alright, so uh, I'm going to read something I wrote there. I wrote this today about where I'm from. This is like all about the town where I'm from. And what, you know, my town is way down in Jersey, down by the shore. Uh, I say way down. It's about an hour and a half south of here. I'm from a little town called Bayville. And it's right on the bay, right on the ocean. Shout out to all my Babel people in the crowd. This thing's called Mayweather. I grew up in a campground in New Jersey, old dirt roads. So I, it felt like West Virginia or something like that. Um, except everybody had an accent like Sylvester Stallone. Shout out to all my city campground homies in the audience. Uh, I live in the city now, but working in an oil refinery in New Jersey. Um, but really, I want to talk to you about where I'm from. Outside the campground, there was a little town by the bay called Bayville, surrounded by pine trees. In the pines, looming over the town, was a massive beige, beige castle built in the 20s by Al Capone. And believe it or not, this is all true. And it was a luxury hotel that Capone built in the 20s, and he used to run his rum out of the, out of the hotel. And there are secret tunnels that go out of this tunnel, and they go underneath the cranberry bog so he can make his escape from the G-Men. Uh, the Mayweather, that's also where my grandfather died. And as you all know about convalescent homes, they're all fucked up. And they take your stuff when you're laying there dying. I'm sure you guys have all had relatives who passed away. Yep. And they took my grandfather's watch. Oh, yeah. Which is yep. no good. Uh, the convalescent home is also a mental care facility. Bottom, this convalescent home. Above the seventh floor, mental care. So, the place is magic for its escape tunnels, but it's also horrible for all the fucked up stuff that goes on above the seventh floor. And not to bum me out, but the seventh floor is where my mother went when she had her mental breakdown. All right, so she, you go there, and all of a sudden you're behind all this wire mesh and doors that only open through controlled uh, buzzing. But one of my coworkers, his mom, she's nine years old. And she is actually in the same uh, convalescent home now. And uh, me and this coworker, we don't get along very well. We almost got in a fist fight last year. I don't remember what it was about, but he was poking me in the chest, and he wanted to fight me in the parking lot after work. So he said, I'm going to fuck you up, meet me on the other side of the turnstiles, and I'm, I'm going to fucking show you where, where it's at. <laughs> but the thing is, he's 68 years old, and I was 32 at the time. <laughs> And what happens when you fight a 62-year-old man, 68-year-old man, is that you can't win. See, either you get you get your shit kicked out of you by the old man, you've got a loose tooth and you have a bloody nose, and there he is, like prize-fighting champion of the world. Or you beat up the old man, and there you are with a fractured hand, and he's laying on the ground coughing up blood, and you're an asshole. So we didn't fight. <laughs> but now we're friends. <laughs> we are friends. And nothing happened. All we did is we didn't fight. And now he brings me citrus every day. Honest to God. He brings me a miniola one day. Another day he brings me a grapefruit. Someday he brings me an orange. And I take it all gladly. I let it go. I just take his citrus. Um, once I delivered pizzas, I delivered a pizza up to the seventh floor to the same unit where my mom was was being taken care of when she was suicidal. When she went to them and said, you know, I'm suicidal and that's how it is and that's what she said to them, but she said to us, to her children, I told them I'm suicidal as a gag just so I could get out of there, but it's not really true, it was all just a big thing. Sometimes you just have to tell people something but you don't really mean it. You just say things. Well, the 13th floor of the Mayweather is interesting. The 13th floor is the roof, which is, if you're ever going to have a roof, make it the 13th floor. It's the best roof, it's the best floor to have as a roof. And that's where all the gods from the convalescent home go to smoke their cigarettes. All the gods on Mount Olympus who are in charge of letting people go or keeping people. Once I dated a girl named Shannon, and Shannon had a job at the Mayweather. And Shannon called me and paged me, and I was able to come and visit her in between breaks in her shift. And we went up to the top of the roof, and we smoked cigarettes, and we could look out from the roof of the building, and we could see across Bayville, and beyond Bayville, and we could see in the distance beyond the bay itself, and we could see the ocean, which was 
pretty fucking cool. We can see the Ferris wheels, and we can see everything going on at Seaside House, New Jersey. But I could also see where I was growing up at the time, which was a campground. And I saw my mother there lighting a fire in the backyard. So I knew everything was good. And it remained good. I was seven. I played Army in the Pines with my friend Abe. And we knew how to find the bunker by the cranberry bog. And it was a concrete pit in the needles and cones. And the pit was covered in 666 in swastika and a wall sealed with bricks that used to be a tunnel, Al Capone's tunnels. We tried to break through the walls with a carpenter's hammer, but what happens is once you break through one wall, there's another concrete wall. We tried other bunkers. Break through one concrete wall, find another wall. Abe's my realtor now. I just got pre-approved for a mortgage. I'm looking in Jersey City. Yeah. I'm looking in Jersey City. This is from, from, from Gabriel. If anybody's looking to buy a place in the Metro City area, Abe Cavella, I have cards. I'll hook you up. <laughs> Abe's dad is Charlie, different Charlie, not the one that wants to beat me up, not the Charlie that gives me citrus fruit. So this Charlie, Abe's father, I met him first, I was probably 11 years old and I was sitting in Abe's house and Charlie sat up at the table and suddenly he had found Jesus. Like you would snap your fingers and things had changed and Christ had come into Charlie's life and he said, I'm going to help people. And he did. He started helping people, which is the flip side of religion. It's, it's all fucked up until suddenly people are helping the poor, helping the destitute. And if you're ever going to help the poor and the destitute, the best place to do it is at the Mayweather home in Bayville, New Jersey. And that's what he did. He loaded up his cars with discarded library books, and he would go there and he would reach the blind and the poor. So shout out to Charlie. My grandfather was, was in the Mayweather around this time, and around that time his watch was stolen. He went to the second floor for hospice care for stomach cancer. And we went and saw him every day that summer. On the first day of autumn, he died. The watch was gone from his wrist. But the day before he died, we came in my mom's minivan, and we saw Charlie's powder blue Volkswagen Rabbit crunched into a tree, front doors hanging wide on the car, and we didn't know what happened. Well, it turns out Charlie was taking the, the library, this is true, taking the library books into the convalescent home, walking up the stairs with him, in between trips, because he needed to make two trips, one of the patients in his white gown with orange starbursts ran out with his fuzzy slippers, got in the Volkswagen Rabbit, jumped in the car, shut the door, slammed on the gas, and crashed into a tree. So that's what you get. No good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> <laughs> and now they have something to talk about every day. That's what happens. At the oil refinery where I work, there's a guard shack that you have to pass through, and the girl who sits in the guard shack is very beautiful. I'm getting to the point of the miniolas, all the citrus. You see, what happened was, Charlie, the other Charlie, not the one who was helped read to the blind, the original Charlie with the citrus, he was trying to get with the girl in the guard shack. And as men try to do, whenever they get the chance, trying to talk to a beautiful girl, Charlie would notice that girl in the guard shack, sometimes someone, I don't know who it was, would give her would give her fruit and she would take it, she'd leave it on her table, she'd put it in her purse or she'd throw it away. So we struck up a conversation. She said, my wife, excuse me, my mother, she's 90 years old and she's in the home and I think she would really like an orange. So the girl started to give Charlie the fruit. But she doesn't eat the fruit. The mother doesn't eat the fruit. <clears throat> girl in the guard shack smiles and gives him an orange, and then he gives me the oranges. She says, Charlie, how are you? Are you okay today? How's your mom? And Charlie gives me a miniola every day. But he says to me, my mom can't eat tangerines. My mom can't eat miniolas. So you take this shit. You know what I give my dying mother every day? I give my dying mother a big slice of birthday cake. What would you rather have if you were dying in a home? A shitty orange? <laughs> and about the watch. I did get my grandpa's watch back. I was delivering a pizza once and I saw the orderly in there. And he had the watch on his wrist. And I went and grabbed Shannon. And as coincidentally as it goes, it was Shannon's last day working at the convalescent home. And it was this guy's last day working at the convalescent home. Things related. 
and there was a confrontation. And I cornered the guy, and I told him I know where he got the watch. And he started crying. Tears came out of his eyes. And I said, good, keep crying. Mop the floors of this fucking place with your tears. Give me the watch back. And he gave me the watch back. And I wear it every day. I wear it. Well, I don't, I don't have it on now because I look at the back of the taxi cab. But I wore that watch every day. You're going to lose everything in your life. The watch got lost. Everything else is going to get lost. And here I am, peeling a grapefruit on the way through the gravel lot. The smoke of the old refinery drifting over my shoulder, the rind falling in the gravel, the sweet juice covering my hands and filling my sour mouth. And here I am in my car with sticky fingers on the steering wheel. And here I am about to drive away, opposite of where I grew up, away from the campground, away from the little town by the bay, away from the May Mayweather. <coughs> I may have never found the way into the secret tunnels that go beneath the cranberry bog, but I know they're there, and sometimes, if you're looking for something to do, and you have nothing else to do, send me a message, give me a call, and we'll go together, and we'll look for these tunnels. And if we give it all we got, I'm sure somehow we can manage to break through those strange brick walls. Thank you for listening. Oh,